If you're a video producer, then I'm sure we're running into the same issue. Never wanting to get rid of anything, ever. So I just keep stacking external drives. One fills up, get a new one. Everything is spread out across different disks, hard to track down. The mainstream large storage arrays all cost well over $1,000, but I think we can build one for cheaper. I have a data storage problem, and today my goal is to fix that. You see, I like to keep an on-hand copy of all of my favorite projects from over the years, everything. Here is the current storage setup. First is a 12 terabyte Sandus Professional, formerly G Drive, but 12 terabytes. Another G Drive, this one is six terabytes, a little bit older of a model. Another G Drive that brings us up to 18 terabytes. Then we have this Seagate eight terabyte expansion desktop drive that brings us to 26 terabytes. And finally, a Synology NAS, four total terabytes, runs over the ethernet port. And I always have trouble connecting to it, so I don't like that. This brings us up to 30 total terabytes of storage here locally. Now, I did a ton of research before purchasing any of this stuff, and I decided not to go with a RAID setup. Main reason why is it just gets very expensive in price. Uh, you're essentially adding discs that aren't adding space. It just adds up a lot in cost compared to not a RAID setup. Now, obviously the perk of the RAID setup is you get redundancy, you get safety. However, I do have a separate solution for that that I'm gonna talk about here in just a little bit. Now that we've established what I currently have, which is a bunch of separate external discs I'm gonna start work on the new solution. The biggest goal of that solution is to create one system that stores everything. One drive, none of this, multiple disks on my desktop, it's all in one place. The first piece of that is the enclosure. This is a JBOD, so it's not a RAID setup. It doesn't have uh, the RAID components in it. JBOD stands for just a bunch of discs, and this is a used item from Amazon. All right, so this particular unit can hold eight drives. We're not gonna be using all eight of them. We do have to have some drives to put in it, otherwise it wouldn't be storage. So let's see what we got for those. These are all from eBay, and that's because they are used hard disks. Now that may sound a little sketchy at first. You don't know how much time these drives have on them. 12 terabytes Iron Wolf from Seagate, a 10 terabyte Iron Wolf from Seagate, 10 terabytes Western Digital, and again, a second one of that same thing, 10 terabytes of Western Digital storage. With this setup I'm working on, it's nice because all the drives don't need to be the same size, the same brand, the same model, any of that stuff. We can just get a bunch of cheap drives, mix them all together. Five drives, that'll leave us three empty bays, and we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 52 terabytes of storage going into this thing, which is about to be more than enough to last a little bit. All right, let's get to putting this thing together. And the drive caddy goes on like that. And then it is good to go. So we'll be able to just slide it in. Well, that's quite easy. Well, that was extremely easy to get all of the drives loaded up into this thing. Next, it's to do some of the software setup. All right, so now we are on to the most important piece of the whole setup, which is the software and the technology that actually makes the whole thing work. So here in the closet of my home office, I actually have an old Mac mini. So now we have all five disks hooked up to the computer. Um, they're all showing up, they're all formatted, and so we're going to start the RAID process. We're going to go to RAID Assistant and go to JBOD, and we're going to select all of five drives. 
and we're gonna name it, we'll call it F4 Array and hit Create. And there we have it. S4 Array with 52 terabytes of storage. All right, so from here, we just gotta copy over all the data, which is gonna take quite a while. So I'm gonna let that go. We're gonna check back in after all the data is copied. All right, while we're waiting for that stuff to transfer, while we're getting the new disk array all loaded up, I wanted to go through some of the cost numbers associated with it. Going through the costs one by one, first is the JBOD enclosure. That was the QNAP TLD800C. Those sell for 500 bucks new on Amazon, but I got a unit that was open box. I paid just $441 for that unit. Then the drives themselves, those came used from eBay. Two 10 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf 10 terabyte drives, those were 150 bucks. Then one single 12 terabyte, same type of drive, the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drive, that was 100 bucks. And then finally two 10 terabyte Western Digital Red drives, those were 100 bucks a piece. That brings our total to $891. And again, it is 52 terabytes. That is a total of $17 per terabyte. So that's pretty reasonable. And that still leaves three open drive bays for future expansion. But for now, I only have 16 of those 52 terabytes full. So I got lots of room to go before I'm running out of space. That completes it. That's my 52 terabyte setup. It's been a year since I originally shot all that stuff and put together the server. And so rather than just edit it at this point and move on, let's give it a little update. Now I've been using it exactly as I built it in the footage. There's no changes, there's no upgrades. It's just been working how I built it. I have it set up and configured in 52 terabytes and over the past year I've used 21 of them, which is just crazy to even say that I filled up 21 terabytes, but I still have over 30 left. So I'm really in good shape and size wise, I can't be happier with the configuration, with the pricing and that whole setup. I don't do any editing directly off the array. I kind of use it as a storage holder. You know, it's not like I have a team of editors that are all accessing it like a NAS. Um, so I'm not in that situation and don't have to think about that. So with all that in mind, the question is, who would I recommend this setup to? And there's definitely a clear user group that it makes sense for. Uh, you know, somebody who doesn't need to edit off of it, essentially just needs a big, large, long-term storage solution and then um, it's happy with the cloud backup. You know, doesn't need something like a RAID, doesn't need something like a local on-hand backup. Um, if anything ever goes down, is happy to wait and get things rebuilt from their cloud backup of the whole thing. That's who this makes sense for. As far as me, a year in, I love it. Super stoked, would not make any changes. This server has been the perfect setup for me.